a very good noon to all of you how are you all so we are meeting after a lot of days i hope your preparation is going fine yes tell me how many of you are here i need a hi hello something from you hi yash how are you all right okay so i'm assuming that things are fine you can hear me and see me okay so today is the part 2 of this session the 100 most expected questions in cmat right you had part 1 where uh, vikrant sir discussed the paper with you in the sense the pattern of the paper with you right you also practice some grammar questions some vocabulary questions there so today also we'll see what all question types have come in the previous years and we'll you know we'll learn how to approach these question types rather than just solving the questions right so that is going to be our aim for today hi dipesh hello ranu hi ritik good afternoon all right so we are all set and this is the first question a uh, typical synonym question tell me which of the following words is a synonym of the word pellucid yes Let's see who answers the fastest. Rithik, it will help you in CAT B R C to increase your vocabulary of high frequency words. So most of the questions today are vocabulary based, right? With some grammar questions here and there. So in case, let's say you feel that currently your vocabulary, when you read R C passages, is not up to the mark, then this session will help you there. Okay, Ranu says C, Dipesh says C. All right. What else? Kostab says C. so we had to give a synonym of this word pellucid so uh, those who say see do you know the exact meaning or did you associate it with some other word and then you came to the answer did you apply grouping and elimination so if you did either you can land on the correct answer in this question so this is not a difficult question see you could associate the word pellucid with lucid right and lucid can be associated with the word lucid lucid means clear right so she gave a very lucid argument that means her argument was clear pellucid again means something that's transparent translucent right that is pellucid so translucent is the answer here now obscure ambiguous murky they are all related aren't they so in case you could not associate pellucid with lucid but you could see this that obscure ambiguous and murky they all are related and translucent appears to be an opposite idea okay an unrelated idea completely then also you could eliminate these three and mark c as your answer right obscure is something that's hidden and not clear ambiguous again something that lacks clarity murky muddy unclear so a b and d eliminated good three of you who said c what about others yes i want more responses look at this word here and tell me what is the antonym of the word armistice yes Good afternoon Harith So what is an armistice you have to give me the opposite of that remember not the synonym but the antonym
Okay, D, A, B, all right. What else? I want more responses, then only I'll give you the answer. Come on. Okay, I haven't got the correct answer yet. I am waiting for the correct answer actually. So, you had to give me the antonym, the opposite, okay, of armistice. The opposite of armistice is skirmish. An armistice is an agreement. So, let's say two countries are fighting. So, to stop war between them, for a certain period of time, they may sign an agreement. This agreement is called armistice. It is also called a truce. It is also called ceasefire. You must have heard this word ceasefire. Right? So, armistice, truce, ceasefire, they are synonyms. So, A cannot be the answer. Peace, again, the idea is to stop fighting. So, armistice is signed so that peace can prevail. Eliminated. Concord again means harmony. Concord means harmony. So, all these three ideas are related to peace. Skirmish on the other hand, yes. What do you understand by this word skirmish? There was a skirmish on the border side. Yes. When there is this spontaneous fighting that breaks out between two parties, that is called a skirmish. Right? So, it's not a planned thing. It's a spontaneous fight that breaks out. Okay? So, it happens... Uh, on the border, okay, in case you've heard of, let's say in, on the Indochina border, it happens at times, on the indo Pak border, it happens at times. So, this is called a skirmish. It can be used in a non-military sense also, right? A skirmish can happen between two people as well. So, C is the antonym here, A, B and D are not the antonyms, okay? All right. So, remember this word, armistice and remember what pellucid means associated with lucid. Also, remember skirmish. Okay, so what is the meaning of this word vicissitude? Vicissitude. Let's see who answers the fastest. Okay, the page says A. Ashvi says C. All right. Harith D. So A, C, D is what I have got so far. Just eliminate. So, I have given you some very easy vocabulary questions today. How are they easy? It is possible to group and eliminate in these questions. So, do, do you see that they are very similar ideas? A, B and D. Sameness, stability, permanence. What is the one option that is different? Changeability. That is your answer here. Vicissitude. In case you have heard vicissitudes of fortune vicissitudes usually it is used as a plural word right so it means a change change in what usually in circumstances in people's fortune okay and it's an unpleasant change it's a negative word actually it stands for an unpleasant change so let's say if someone who's uh, very successful suddenly becomes unsuccessful okay suddenly fails at a venture if somebody who's rich becomes poor Okay, somebody who, is, who has a family suddenly loses his or her family. So, we would say that, okay, uh, let's say a change in fortune happened. So, uh, she stood by her husband when he faced some vicissitudes of fortune, right? So, vicissitudes is used in this sense. Okay, so she stood by her husband's vicissitudes. C is the answer. 
Yes, absolutely correct, Ashmi. Good that you identified this. So, easy questions I gave you. Sometimes the word may appear to be difficult, but the options make the question to be easy. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at this parajumbal question here. Right. So, one parajumbal came last year as well in CMAT. So, you have to give me the correct sequence here. Take the help of options. Don't solve entirely through options, but definitely take their help. Tell me what the answer should be here. Yes. Hi Pratik. Okay, so I've got two responses already. Good. Others? All right. So when you read this para jumble for the first time, it appears a little jarring that the word the band, the band that is present in all the options, all the sentences, isn't it? But that has been done to confuse you deliberately, right? However, there is a story here, right? You have to focus on that story and you have to take the help of the options, right? So, we in this, in sentence A, we are talking about the band's background that they had been playing together for years before they finally gained recognition for their unique sound. So, this is pre-recognition era, right? And if you look at D, we are talking about what happened after the gained success. So, what happened afterwards? That is what I am talking about. So, it looks like that A should be the opening sentence and D should be the closing sentence. Right? And the part in between should talk about their success. There is only one such option that fits this criteria. So, A, we first talk about the band's background. Then, Okay, we then say, okay, they finally gained recognition. So, how did they gain recognition? The band's breakthrough single was a catchy tune that quickly climbed the charts and earned them national attention. So, that's how they gained recognition. Then we talk about what did they become popular for? What else? Except, let's say, their unique sound. The band's lead singer was known for his charismatic stage presence and ability to connect with the audience. Okay, so this is what they were known for. However, despite their success, despite let's say being known for their catchy tunes, unique sounds, a good lead singer, the band remained committed to their independent label. So A, C, B and D. This is the sequence here. No other sequence fits. Okay, let's see uh, what else you've said. Uh, just a second. A, B, A, D, C and C, A, B, D. These are two other sequences that I've got. A and C. Option A and option C. Um, C cannot be the opening sentence because we first, we, we'll, we'll first give a background because if you put C first, A does not make sense afterwards. Right. So, we first talk about the part before they finally gain recognition. So, this is the part where they finally gain recognition. Right. So, this cannot happen. Then, the band's lead singer first will talk about uh, the band, then we'll come to the band's lead singer. First the band as a whole, then the band's constituents parts. So again, C does not fit. Okay. No issues, Ritik. Right, so I hope now you've got the logic and do not get confused by such sentences where let's say one noun has been repeated time and again. Don't think how will I make pairs out of it. Right? Okay. Let's have a look at some phrasal verbs. So, last year you did have, I think, three phrasal verb questions. So, that means it's an important 
area for you. Yes, look at it and tell me what the answer should be. A simple fill in the blank question. Okay, D, A, B, all right. A lot of you say A. Caught up, okay. What does it mean to catch up? So, this is just the past tense of the phrasal verb, catch up. If you catch up with someone, you basically, let's say they were ahead of you, now you gain speed and come equal to where they are. So, that is one meaning of to catch up to someone, to catch up with someone. Okay, and the other is uh, to catch up with your friends. So, let's say you meet your friends after a long time. That is another meaning. So, yoga has caught up with the youngsters all over the world. Okay, so you think that uh, uh, yoga was earlier behind the youngsters. Now, it has caught up with the youngsters. Doesn't be make more sense? Has caught on. So, the phrasal verb here is catch on and we are using the past tense has caught on. When something catches on, it becomes popular. Okay, usually used for a fashion, for a practice, right? So, a fashion trend or practice, they catch on, they become popular. So, that is the one that is more appropriate here rather than caught up. Okay, so surprisingly, yoga has become popular with the youngsters all over the world. So, the answer is B here, not A. So, whenever you have close options, see these two options were close here, weren't they? Cast on and she weed along, they were different. So, please pay attention to them. Try to recall sentences in which you have heard these phrases, right? And that will help. Cast a spell on. When you cast a spell on someone, you totally mesmerize them. They are enchanted by your presence. That is to cast a spell on someone. To shivy someone along, when you shivy someone along, you prod them to do something, you encourage them, them to do something that they don't want to do, right? So, uh, let's say during the exams, sometimes our parents shivy us along to study. We are, we are reluctant, but they encourage us to study. So, that is to shivy someone along, okay? So, he was reluctant to study, but I shivied him along. That's how we will use it. She cast a spell on him. Yoga has caught on with the youngsters. I caught up with my friends. Right? Hope this is clear to you. Chalo. Good. All right. Let's see this one. So, again, phrasal verbs using the verb called. Okay. So, just analyze them and then tell me what the answer should be. B, A, C, all right. Okay, so I have got a lot of Bs, I can see. Okay. My uncle called out. What does it mean to call out? The, uh, you know, the context in which I have heard call out the most is when you uh, call out someone's unacceptable behavior. When you, uh, you know, draw attention to someone's unacceptable behavior. So, she called him out for his uh, racist remarks. Okay. 
that's one context in which i have heard it and this is usually the most popular context the other can be you know uh, when you want someone to be present for an emergency case so usually the services of doctors right so when you call someone out you in a way summon them to deal with an emergency you want them to deal with an emergency right okay so uh, attention to unacceptable behavior call attention to unacceptable behavior or to seek someone during an emergency these are the two meanings of call out so you know phrasal verbs they are a part of vocabulary they are not a part of grammar because they have fixed meaning so these are the two most popular meanings of call out and this is the context in which it is used you can't use it in some other context so that's why my uncle called out on his way to work is incorrect okay i think i actually thought that you would get confused between a and c call in versus call by call in versus call by when you call in again you summon someone for their services so i called in the plumber let's say i needed something fixed okay and i called in the plumber i called in the electrician so that is one meaning of call in right the other can be when you call someone up to inform them of something so for instance she is called in sick yes you must have heard this she is called in sick today so when you call in sick you call basically you make a call to your office and you say oh i'll not be able to come to office today because i'm sick that is to call in sick so to telephone in order to provide some info that is another meaning of call in right so call in uh, here does not fit because see this person just made a brief visit okay call in on someone call in on someone is to visit them that usage is correct but the, this sentence is not that kind of a sentence no call in on someone to nahi hai na yahan par so call in on so for instance he called in on me that means he visited me then it would be fine so ye this also gets eliminated right uh, called by when you just make a brief visit on your way to some place else that is when you call by a particular place okay so he called by on his way to work c is the answer here neither a nor b right and what does it mean to call around we call around for information again so what am i doing here i am recalling the context in which i have heard these sentences right so if you call around for information you are just calling up people and uh, you're trying to let's say find some information you and sometimes we call around to make arrangements so let's say there's a party at your place you want to make arrangements so you call around people you telephone a number of people to make those arrangements that is to call around of course it does not fit here so i hope now you'll remember the meanings i've told you the most popular meanings of these phrasal verbs call out to draw attention to an acceptable behavior to summon in case of an emergency call in just to call someone for some service that you need from them or to telephone so for instance a lot of our listeners have been calling in on if you hear radio shows you must have heard this a lot of our listeners have been calling in today right this meaning then called by is the answer here and called around is to seek information by phoning people it's not tough actually again uh, you know phrasal verbs they appear tough because they have fixed meanings and the best way to learn phrasal verbs the long term way is through reading right however i understand that this is long term you need something short term in the short term you have to learn them just like you learn vocabulary so for that i may have told this to you earlier also renan martin has a chapter on phrasal verbs just go through that chapter you will actually cover 250 to 300 phrasal verbs through that right okay now look at this fill in the blank question here four options are given to you see we have some words that we've already covered so for instance transparent lucid we've already covered these words right so let me see who answers the fastest here
यस ऋतिक एब्सोल्युटली Let's see. Okay, I've got D, C, all right. Okay, more of D's, all right. Okay, so the dash of the novel was so dense. When something is dense, that means there's a lot of information, a lot of details packed in short, you know, you know, in a short space. That is what makes it dense. The dash of the novel was so dense that it required multiple readings. And even then, the meaning was not always dash. Okay. So, even then, the meaning was not always clear. Clearly, I am looking for the word clear here, isn't it? So, B and C cannot be the answers, isn't it? In the second blank, I am looking for the word clear. Obscure is something that's hidden or unclear. Convoluted is something that's very twisted. Convoluted is twisted. Difficult to understand. So, even this cannot be the answer. B, C, eliminated. Okay. Here, you know, grammar can also help you at times. The dash of the novel. I am looking for a noun here. Prosaic is an adjective the prose of the novel so there's prose and there's poetry right poetry when you write poems you know sometimes using a rhyme scheme short sentences separating it into stanzas prose the way you write your essays your articles that is called prose right so a novel is prose versus, versus you know poetry so the prose of the novel was so dense the text of the novel was so dense that it required multiple readings, okay? And lucid is clear. It perfectly fits here. Okay, what is prosaic? Just guess the meaning from prose. You know, uh, so one is that something that's opposed to poetry. That is one meaning, a very literal meaning of prosaic. However, earlier, you know, poetry was considered a higher art form. A higher literature form that people used to think that it requires more skill to write poems than to write prose so in that sense it is also used uh, in a derogatory sense prosaic it means something that lacks imagination so if i call something prosaic if i call a performance of an artist prosaic i want to say it lacked imagination it lacked originality right that's also a meaning so d delhi is the answer here Absolutely, Mayank. Correct, correct. So, I hope this is clear to you. Prosaic was uh, something that could help you in terms of grammar to understand that A is not the answer. B and C could help you in terms of meaning. So, if, you, if the context was clear to you, you would realize we were looking for clear. And D, I mean, it absolutely fits in terms of context, in terms of grammar. So, these are answers. Okay. Now, let's have a look at an analogy question. So, in analogy, what you have to do is, one pair of words is given to you. You figure out the relationship between this pair. And then you look for a similar relationship in another pair. So, now you have to form a pair with euphonious, which has a similar relationship that incandescent has to light. So, tell me. A very easy question again. All right. So, I have got a lot of A's, others, okay, absolutely correct, A is the answer, incandescent emitting light, right, incandescent bulbs, 
I think you could associate it with uh, the advertisements that we see incandescent bulbs. So incandescent is associated with light, right? It means emitting light as a result of heat. And I am looking for a synonym. I am looking for a meaning of euphonious. EU means good or well. EU is a prefix that means good or well. Phone means sound. OUS turns this into an adjective. So having the quality of good sound. Something that is melodious. So A is our answer. Can you give me some other words that have EU as a prefix? It's a popular prefix. Euphoria. Yes. Eulogy. Euphemism. What else? You stress. You catastrophe. Catastrophe. You catastrophe. These all have EU before them. That means they mean something good. Euthanasia also. So, euphoria, the peak of someone's excitement, happiness, that is euphoria. Eulogy, good words said, usually, usually said for the deceased. So, words in the praise of the deceased. Eulogy. Euphemism, when instead of saying uh, the actual word, you say a politer word because you think that people may find the original word to be pretty rude. That is a euphemism. So, for instance, we call the restroom the restroom, but we don't usually go and rest there, right? But people sometimes get offended when we say toilet. It offends their sensibilities at times. That's why we call it the restroom. Yes? You stress. So, good stress. The right amount of stress that helps you to perform well. That is called you stress. You catastrophe, a relatively recent word in English. So, you catastrophe, it means that you know, in a, in a story when something bad happens and finally it gets resolved at the end and we have a happy ending, that is called a catastrophe. So, a good catastrophe, a good disaster because there is a happy ending. Right? It was coined by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, L.O.T.R. author. Okay? Euthanasia, absolutely. Eucalyptus also comes, eucalyptus also has EU as its root. Euthanasia, yes. Thanatos means death. That's why, you know, Thanos is called Thanos. So, Thanatos is death. Euthanasia, good death. So, mercy killing is euthanasia. From where we, you can prepare these. So, this is the root word technique that I am currently adopting with you. Okay, in case you are talking about this list. Now, uh, for the root word technique, there are books available in the market that you can buy. There are lists also that are available online. Okay, so there's this website called membean.com. Membean.com has a root tree list. Okay, and these are high frequency roots. So even if you go just through this root tree list, I think it should uh, add to your pool of vocabulary like anything, right? Uh, word power made easy is always there. It follows the root word technique. So, that's always a resource that you have. Apart from this, there are other books actually in case you are interested in doing books. So, those use the root word technique. Right? Okay. How about sonorous and effulgent? What is sonorous? Remember, metals are sonorous. When we studied the properties of metals in school, metals are sonorous. They produce this ringing sound, right? That is what we call as sonorous. So, something and someone who has a deep voice, that is also called a sonorous voice, right? So, a deep voice, sonorous. So, I can say Amitabh Bachchan's voice is sonorous, right? This deep voice is also called a baritone. Baritone is a noun, sonorous is an adjective. And effulgent means radiant. Effulgent and radiant are synonyms. So, D and B synonyms. Okay. Alright. Cat, no. Ritik Cat does not ask uh, analogy questions directly. Okay. You just have RC passages and verbal logic in cat. Verbal ability also some students call it. Right. 
So Sakshi, you asked this earlier as well. Um, uh, some easy topics to you know prepare. Um, so see, if I talk about the broad areas, you know that we have vocabulary, grammar, RC passages. So uh, let's say one RC passage, and last year we had a para jumble question also. So if you look at your syllabus, it's pretty limited, and if I look at 3 and 4, you need not prepare for them uh, separately as such. Because para jumbles, you do have options. You can take the help of options there. RC passages, I'm sure you must have read some RC passages uh, uh, I mean, for your other exams. And even if you haven't, just go through your past year papers. I think that should suffice. CMAT RCs are not usually very difficult. When it comes to vocabulary and grammar, see, vocabulary is like an ocean. I can't tell you that, okay, do this and leave that. Do this question type and leave that question type. But if you're looking for something easy, I think fill in the blanks are the easiest question type in my opinion. Okay. Also, those synonym antonym questions where you can group and eliminate are pretty easy and time saving. So, go for the time saving questions, the shorter questions and fill in the blanks. In grammar, again, FIBs will be easier for you. And if you prepare some basic area, so for instance, parts of speech, if you're well-versed with, if you're well-versed with tenses, then I think you should get through quite a few grammar questions. So I think parts of speech, including your tenses, is something that everyone should prepare for. Right, so I hope this helps you. Okay. All right, now look at some options here. There are four options. And they have some spellings. Each option has some spelling. You have to tell me which option has all correct spellings. Yes. All the correct spellings. Let's see. Okay, Mayank says D. Others. That's it. B, okay. All right. Okay, that's it, D versus B. Bus, that's it, four responses. All right, let me tell you, uh, three of you are absolutely correct. D Delhi is the answer, not B. What is the spelling of adolescence? Is this the correct spelling? Yes. Isn't there a C here? Adolescence. So, this is not the correct spelling. And therefore, right at this juncture, we eliminate B. D, yes. Garrulous, notoriety, centenarian, ignominious. All are correct here. Who is a garrulous person? Someone who is shy, does not talk a lot. The opposite. Someone who talks a lot. Talkative. Loquacious. Notoriety. If someone gains notoriety, that means uh, they gain uh, and uh, they gain disrepute actually. They gain bad reputation. So the better word for that will be disrepute. Someone who is infamous. Okay. Notorious. From the word notorious comes the word notoriety. Centenarian. Cent here tells me this has something to do with 100. 
yes cent so centenarian is a person who is 100 years old or more than 100 years old okay 100 or more ignominious ignominy what is ignominy when you feel very humiliated okay so ignominious is something that causes that uh, you know causes humiliation and disgrace that is ignominious so let's say uh, his conduct uh, at so and so event was ignominious it was humiliating it caused us shame right so that's the meaning all right so d delhi is absolutely fine others have errors so for instance here exoneration this should be exoneration what does it mean to exonerate someone to exonerate someone is to pardon them to forgive them to forgive or pardon pardon sorry then adolescence here then here movability had a double l in case you did not notice this okay plus ignominious was also incorrect movability had a double l so we could eliminate these right okay which exams should we attempt along with the cat so along with the cat you can take other exams such as that right here also rc passages are quite important okay and then it depends on your interest so for in instance if you are interested in an mba in international business you can go for ift right uh, in case let's say you are interested in finance marketing you can take nmat snap and these are considered to be relatively easier exams so that's why i'm categorizing these two together versus these two together so it depends on your interest just explore a bit okay all right let's have a look at some grammar questions now so here's a preposition question on your screen yes I'm really excited dash the concert tonight, but I'm worried dash the weather. So, which preposition pair fits the best? Mayank says, hey, all right. Okay, A. All right. So I've got A's. Absolutely correct. I am excited for the concert tonight, but I'm worried about the weather. Correct. So this will not fit here. See, we can be excited about something. So about is not incorrect here. However, when we worry for, we worry for someone, you know, I'm worried for him. I'm worried for his health. So we can't worry for the weather. We are not personally invested that way. We don't share a relationship with the weather like that. So for does not fit in the second blank. And that's why B cannot be the answer. The others could be easily eliminated towards in. They don't fit in the first blank. Right? So A is the answer here. All right. Now, identify the incorrect sentence out of the given four sentences here. The second last question for the day, I want all of you to be enthusiastic now yes
Okay. Monkey has answered the fastest and he says B. All right. Kavita says B. Amisha also says B. Mayank B. Excellent. Excellent. All of you. Uh, I've also got C. Given is to yield, to reluctantly agree. So the government is not likely to reluctantly agree to the student's demands. Makes sense. Right. So C cannot be the answer. It is B. People give up. You know, when you give up on something, when you give up an idea, you just let go of it. Okay. You uh, accept your defeat in front of it. That is what it means to give up. The rope does not give up. The rope does not accept its defeat. The rope can't do that. Right. The rope can, however, collapse. It can break. So, one way is that you just use give. The rope gave. The rope gave. When I say the rope gave, gave here means collapsed. Gave here means collapsed. And uh, another way to put it is the rope gave way. The rope gave way. To, here it does not mean kisi ko rasta de de na. No, don't translate it to Hindi. Here to give way is to again not be able to withstand pressure and to break, to collapse. That is what it means to give way. Right. So either of these can be used here but up is not correct. I mean it's incorrect and that's why B is our answer here. Hope this makes sense. Good. Quite a few of you said B. That's very heartening. The fire gave off. Gave off is to release dense black fumes. Gave her, his legs gave out. That means when you when you know some some body part of yours gives out. That means it's no longer able to function, right? So D is correct. C is correct. A is correct. All right. Now the last question for the day. Let me see what you say. Direct indirect speech. This is in the direct speech, this sentence. Now convert it to indirect speech. Yes. Let's see who answers the fastest. And yes, if you enjoyed today's session, do press the like button. Mayank says A. Amisha A. Harith B. Kosta B. All right. What about others? 24 students in the session and I've got what? Five responses. Okay, A, all right. So it's A versus B in the chat box. I can see that with more of A's, right? A is the answer here. So see this. The simple rule that you had to follow here was that in indirect speech, when you convert something from direct speech to indirect speech, the past simple tense, the past simple tense changes to past perfect tense. It changes to past perfect tense, right? So, here we had past simple tense. Here had did not symbolize the perfect tense, no. It means if I possessed, simply is just substituted with possessed. If I possessed more time, simple past, possessed, possessed cup, past tense, if I possessed more time. Now, if I had possessed more time, past will change to past perfect, no? So, if I had possessed, so if I had had, and of course, I will change to he. So, if he had had more time, no other sentence has this. A can, A can, I mean, no other uh, sentence can be the answer here. Blaise Pascal said that if he had possessed more time, now would write again is simple past, would write simple past, would have written, changes to would have written, past perfect. Okay, that is why 
we have had two times. Rithik, is this clear? The second hat symbolizes possessed. The first hat symbolizes that we have changed past simple to past perfect. Okay, any queries, please do ask me. I am still here, right? And meet our CAT 2022 toppers. And uh, we've had some really good conversions this year. You know, with four out of our six students who had IMA calls, they've already converted. The fifth one is also uh, there on the borderline, should convert, right? So great conversions this year. And this is our new batch in case you wish to join. Just check out the details. The link is in the description box. A lot of features, a lot of practice material, a lot of, a lot of guidance available for you, right? To make this accessible, we have another scholarship test on the 29th at 7 p.m., right? If you perform well in it, then you can get up to a 90% scholarship. Also, if you're worried about VARC, yes, that's a, a weak spot for a lot of students. So, join this workshop on the 22nd at 7 p.m. and Vikran sir will clarify all your doubts. He'll help you evolve a test-taking strategy. There, and this is already going on. You are currently attending. 100 most expected CMAT questions, right? So do keep joining us, right? And yes, just a second, some queries here. Uh, Kavita, which one? Acha, why is had twice there? See, uh, if I had more time, right? Uh, let's just change it to an even simpler sentence. I had more time. I had more time, right? Forget the if, just forget the if. So, when you say I had more time, this is the main verb, right? This is not some helping verb. What does this verb mean here? This had here, what does it mean? If I possessed more time, agar mere paas all time hota, right? So, if I possessed more time, that is what it means. So, that means instead of writing I had more time, I could simply have written I possessed more time. Now, if I ask you, this, uh, in which tense is this sentence? Yes, yes sentence kaun se tense mein? If I ask you this, what will you say? You will just look at this verb. You will see, oh, this is the past simple tense. And you will, you will be correct. Now, if I ask you to change it to past perfect, how will you change, change this to past perfect? I possessed more time. I had possessed. You will change it to past perfect like this by adding a had. I had possessed. Right. So, here if there is no confusion, then why is there a confusion when I change this possessed to had, which is, which is the meaning of had, right? So, I had had more time. Even this is fine. Right. So, just realize that the verb had has multiple meanings. It doesn't just have one meaning and one of its meanings is possessed. So, look at it like possessed and then there will be no confusion. Okay. All right. Yes, Ritik, ye live sessions, hai, right? Okay. And yes, for your practice, particularly CMAT aspirants, for your practice, we have daily section wise quizzes on our app. So just download the app and you will find these quizzes in the practice tab. Okay. Also, yes, so those who are CAT aspirants, Ritik, for you, we have a 500 most expected CAT question series going on. It will go on for quite some time now. So keep joining us, keep learning new questions each time and stay connected. I'm sure you've subscribed to the channel. You can also join us on other social media platforms. Download the app for more practice and for more informative sessions for CAT and other exams. All right, then this is it from my side for today. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. Bye-bye. All the best.